So folk, Bob's back in the house. Any wiser after my long trips and, and, and thought process? Absolutely not. The fog of war is just too thick, just like the pollution in uh, uh, covering New Delhi. You can't see outside, you can't see reason. It's only retribution. And let's just see first, I'll lead up to the one main question that I'll put up at the end of this thing. So please see my uh, video till the end and maybe you guys can answer. And what was I uh, seeing before I left with their soldiers poised to attack? Israelis trying to decipher delay. Critical supplies stuck at Egypt. Gaza border. But look at this. Israel maintains blockade to keep aid out foreign citizens in. That's kind of inhuman, isn't it? Do your, and that's beginning to play out now, right? Do your bit to ease Israel crisis. Sunak urges the Saudis. Israel Hamas war puts Arab leaders on edge as anger grows. Region unravels. Then you have despite promises aid for Gaza remains stuck at Egypt border. United States issues stark warning of increased international terror threat. Spillover from crisis darkens door of Muslims living in Europe. Mosul battle offers cautionary tale for fiendishly difficult task in Gaza. This Mosul and Iraq and Afghanistan actually do have a, a, a huge lesson for Israel. And let me just tell you about Israel. One thing that I've learned. Degraded Netanyahu. Can he be tried as a war, war criminal? Probably. All done for his own or for his own political uh, uh, purposes in Israel. He's destroyed the entire institutions. The hell of invincibility gone. But do remember, without the region, without Saudi Arabia, Israel really, really, really doesn't have much that it can uh, 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 much hope for survival and the United States, of course. At some point of time, the way the demographics of the United States is changing, right? The liberal left is not going to give Biden a, a, a hope in hell because they're absolutely calling it genocide. And I'll tell you how that, that's beginning to play out, right? Then you have Israel's allies warn citizens to leave Lebanon as regional tension rises. U.S. troops in Middle East face Repeated drone attacks, Biden urges help for Israel, Ukraine in Oval Office speech. In turmoil of two wars, Biden sees U.S. leadership as essential. It's kind of become, right? Biden makes case to U.S. in seeking wartime aid for two allies. Deal is reached on aid through Egypt to Gaza as desperation mounts. And then this is what, I like I said, right? As somebody Biden has said, Biden's warning how war on terror backfired, and that's Afghanistan, right? And also Mosul, right, which I just read out. And as Swaminathan Ayer writes, uh, lessons for Israel, restrain better than revenge, but that now seems to be somewhat of a, uh, somewhat of a, you know, genies out of the bottle. But there was, you know, what's happening, as you can see, the narrative globally, whether it's the streets of, of West Asia, m large Muslim countries, whether it is now the important part, campuses in the United States are on a boil. So much so that you had so many, so big that you have this one uh, fellow, Mike Rowan, I think, who's the owner of uh, the large uh, Apollo, group, Apollo Capital Group, who's uh, pulled out its, uh, his uh, endowment to or his contribution to uh, a University of Penn State because of anti-Semitism. But let me just tell him this action of his is the reason for anti-Semitism because everybody feels that the Jewish community has an unhealthy control over finances and, and news. And that's why they hate them, right? Do I blame them? Probably not. Now, here we have somebody in my, and there's also royal in all our WhatsApp groups, you know, for and not for, so for. The right wing in, in even our country is beginning basically defends Israel's action, right? So you have somebody who mentioned that killing of civilians is, 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 is not, is not called for, not to the extent of this, right? And somebody in that said, couldn't agree more. Hamas in Gaza, Lakshar in Mumbai, pattern and intent, same, go for civilians. When retribution comes, play the victim card. Absolutely wrong, my friend. I'm not going to name you. Absolutely wrong. There is complete difference between what happened in the United States on the World Trade Center, what happened in Mumbai, what happened in Spain. There is what you call uninsured interest, which means that the people who are attacking 
uh, 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 the United States there, India here, uh, Bombay here, Indusan civilians, is completely, they didn't have any stake in the game and you can retaliate against them. You can figure out how to do that. But in Gaza and the Palestinians, it's about, again, this is this their land. Who's going to, are, are you telling me it's not their land? It's, of course it's their land. It's, it's a forced geographical concoction that happened in 48 and then some mythological, historical, uh, you know, uh, Red Sea and, 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 and everything else. But absolutely different between what is the killing of civilians as far as Mumbai was concerned, as far as, as, far as, uh, as uh, the United States was concerned. This is completely wrong and I disagree. Where were you were on this group, right? And then you have this. Sunak holds productive talks with Saudi Arabia after wanting to stand with Europe. And then this is the beautiful part. How Hamas caught US and Israeli intelligence unaware. And this really was the story. Totally degraded. Right? He says, one clear lesson is that human intelligence, that is old-fashioned spying, has been neglected. Why is that? Because he had all his spies spying on his opponents. And what do you have to worry about now, right? Is, is, is something else that who created this, right? Just think about this. There's another gentleman who wrote a very intelligent fellow where what Hamas did with the recent attack was not justified. Absolutely not. However, please do consider the systematic throttling of a certain community over extended periods of time to be good enough reason for the existence of Hamas. Then again, there are other questions. Who created Hamas? Who created Hamas? Who used them? And for what? And it is clear intelligence. This was Netanyahu's game to build Hamas against the Palestinian, the more liberal left Palestinian liberal, liberal or, or Palestinian liberation organization in West Bank. Who used them and for what? Who funds them? And, and who triggered the current Hamas attack? And these are critical questions that you must ask yourself. And Here's a, here's a piece that I just read. Netanyahu has helped feed the Hamas monster. He says, Israel's response now risks creating a yet another generation of Palestinians filled with fury and hate so that the cycle continues and Israelis can never feel secure in their homeland. Jonathan Friedland rightly condemns Benjamin Netanyahu for his government's failure to protect Israeli citizens. But he could have broadened his argument to highlight the culp culpability of Netanyahu and his predecessors for putting them in harm's way in the first place. This is something you guys you should understand and, 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 and acknowledge. Then you have attack cost Netanyahu core supporters. This is beginning to play out, right? And you have, uh, uh, what do you have here? You have Netanyahu rebuffs US call for pause and strikes on Gaza. This is all today. Mideast tension echoing on campuses, like I said, in the United States. And there's going to be hell to pay. GOP renews its fight. Uh, then you have High Court, then you have Hamas rebuilt its arsenal with Iran help. That's obvious somebody helped them. Hezbollah leader warns Israel that a regional war is possible. And that is something that the United States is desperately trying to avoid. Then you had this risks multiply in Israel's invasion as Israel's invasion expands. And why is the other people you can blame is the Arabs. Arab leaders don't care about Palestinians and that is absolutely true, he says. The support offered by governments in the Middle East does not extend to taken in any refugees or anything else. Then you have this. Blinken to press Israelis for pause to help uh, get aid and hostages out. Then you have troops encircle Gaza City as Israel backlash glows. Uh, then you have... In policy switch, U.S. urges human, humanitarian pause for aid, which he did. Qatar, uh, Biden meets Chinese. This is this is not important I, on this one. Fractured democracies embolden their enemies. Just remember this, and what and this is true for us too. Just remember what does he write? He says Netanyahu's polarizing politics divided and arguably distracted Israel. There's a stark warning here for its Western allies, okay? And from here we go to something that I've always said that uh, uh, Israel fou fouled up on, and that was essentially, where do, we, where do we have it? Sorry, give me a minute. Here's, here's, here's what I have. Hamas has set a trap that Israel must avoid, and they did not avoid it. It says, 
Iranian backed attacks are a desperate attempt to halt growing collaboration with Saudi Arabia and the UAE. He says, how Hamas managed to launch a brutal terrorist offensive without any foreknowledge inside Israeli's formidable intelligence services will be the subject of inquiries and soul searching for years to come. To pull off such a feat will have required absolute secrecy among a tiny leadership group, giving last minute orders to their followers and working only by word of mouth, but it is also needed complacency and distraction in Israel's leadership. The last chance for a two-state solution has now passed. And what he says is the end game for Israel. It cannot create a situation where there is no going back to Saudi Arabia, because if it's no going back to Saudi Arabia, then hey, that's the end of play for, for Israel, right? Is a bitter blame game will follow in Israel, he says. War unites nations. The shock and horror of Hamas attacks on Israel have brought deep divided country together. It is possible that Benjamin Netanyahu, the Israeli prime minister, may now form a national unity government. Israel unity will last a while because this crisis is very far from over. The fate of hostages inside Gaza, including children and old people, will continue to torment Israel. The government also faces the risk of fronts opening up in occupied West Bank or on the border with Lebanon. But fairly soon, Israel will be plunged into a divisive political argument about what went wrong and it has already started. Two failures will have to be addressed. The first is an intelligence and security failure. The second is strategic, right? So then what we had is, is, is some of our articles that came out. The Gaza geopolitics, it says keeping Iran out of all deals and ignoring Palestinians were the, was, were the weak links in West Asia's new trade and security deals. They absolutely was. And like I said, retribution in Israel. Netanyahu targets Intel chiefs, then apologizes. Netanyahu blames army as public support drains away. Hostage envoys fear repeating past mistakes. U.S. moves to deter Iran from entering conflicts ahead of Israel's Gaza invasion. Let's tell everybody. Netanyahu is toast. Israel is not what it was used to be. That's something that you've learned. United States may have a lot to have to have. Uh, to do with it for not forcing the two-state solution. But like I said, is they don't have to come in directly Iran. Yeah? But Yemen's you Houthis fire missiles at, its, as, at Israel. The widening scope of Israel-Hamas conflict has unnerved states, including the world's biggest oil exporter, Saudi Arabia, hardening fears of spillover, right? And Biden, like I said, is in trouble. If he doesn't do his bit to stop this war, he may well just lose the 24 elections. Biden backing genocide, we will remember in 24. This is Rashida Tlaib, and she's one of the Democrats, the liberal left, right? Between Israel and a hard place, right? Seema Siroi, she puts it very nicely. She says, Joe Biden is under increasing pressure at home and abroad for his careful balancing act in Israel. Hamas war as he tries to deter wider conflict with pro-Palestinian protests in major cities and Israel launching a ground invasion of Gaza, demands are mounting for an immediate ceasefire. Whether Biden can force a lid on Israel's military operation with tough love on one hand and regional tensions with a show of force on the other remains to be seen. It's going to be tough, right? And like she wrote, she said, Spaghetti West Asian. Joe Biden's show of solidarity with Israel while acknowledging the plight of Palestinians is wise, but that was a while ago. But what she wrote then is coming true now. She says, death of the illusion that the U.S. could have unsettled region in the arms of new alignment smelling uh, faintly of peace is hard for Washington to bear. A new West Asia seemed so close after the Abraham Accord as Arab states began to look at the future, not in the past, to imagine an economic corridor to Europe to transport groups, not grievances, goods, not grievances, seemed plausible, not foolish. Last month, a top U.S. official boasted to an elite audience that under Joe Biden, the Middle East region is quieter today than it was been for two decades. Not so, said the many actors with many agendas who run a parallel world out there, and not the least Russia and China. The region is on the edge, passions are inflamed, streets are bursting and laments are Piercing the quiet. History came brutally back to claim its due when Hamas bulldozed its way from Gaza into Israel. All the deterrence money could buy was demolished with cheap repurposed drones and jammers, leaving a 
painful lesson for all, all, not just for Israel. And this is true for India too, folks. It seems Prime Minister Netanyahu has so, was so consumed with ensuring his political survival, he neglected Israel. Is that something that might happen here too, right? Asia will test America's limits, its resources, both military, diplomatic, and its influence. So here, let me talk about nationalism. This is called four nationalism. Now, I ran into a lesson in nationalism with another meeting that I had with a friend of mine who said something about, ah, well, you know, I was talking about the uh, 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 land being given away to China, and his retort was power differential, power differential. Oh, wow. What about this, man, right? Then you have this, India staying in middle to have a role in future Jordan's ambassador. It's a warning from the Middle East to India not to take sides. What else could happen? As Tavleen writes, Gaza will affect Kashmir. It most will, most certainly will at some point of time. And what I have now, let's conclude, right? So what do we see here? What is clear is United States is indispensable, obviously. But what's... The opinion against Israel is growing leaps and bounds. I, I mean, now, earlier it was one-to-one -one that you know, people were defending Israel and its right to retaliate. Now, it's just plain butchery. What Netanyahu is doing is ethnic cleansing, is actually doing genocide. And for me, I mean, I may be wrong, but it's for me at this point of time, all the goodwill or, or, or sympathy one had for the Jewish people because of what happened uh, uh, under Hitler has evaporated. I mean, he can't carry those cards and, you know, he can't pull in that debt anymore. Not from the rest of the world. United States also, by and large, I am saying that they're also for Biden. It's trouble at home. And he also really, really can't continue to side with uh, Netanyahu. This is Netanyahu's war. It's not necessarily Israel's, right? If you had somebody smarter as a prime minister. In fact, now I'm seeing a lot of reports coming out of England, out of, out of the United States, who are actually asking for Netanyahu's removal. And a report suggesting very, very clearly that he's the wrong man for the wrong job. It's just, it's just not him. It's, he shouldn't be there at all. So folks, at the end of the day, the world... This the war of the fog of war. It's not clearing up yet. Gaza, like Mosul, like Afghanistan, is a hellhole. And I can tell you this: this I am sure IDF is not capable of of taking this 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 running this urban landscape war for much longer without United States help. And even with the U.S. help, but think about it: U.S. failed in Mosul, U.S. failed in Afghanistan, and had to run right at the end of the day. When people are fighting for their land, which Palestinians are, they are. You will never be able to 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 bludgeon them out of existence, right? You can't. Three cheers and jail.